Hello and welcome my banana gods. How you doing today? It's Chris here and today we're gonna do something real special for you guys. This took me forever to make. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys wanted to press that like button for me. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys all of the different banana farms and talk about their efficiency. Now this is going to go into some pretty extreme depth right here. So some of you guys, it may be a little bit uh, you know above your pay grade over here. You just might play this game for fun. But we still need to talk about it. You guys should at least have a basic idea of what banana farms you should be using in your game. And then you keep did a surprisingly odd job of making this really, really convenient. Confusing. It took me almost an hour and a half of figuring out math and designing things and doing tests to make sure that I got you guys the right information right now. So, you guys are probably most excited about the fifth tier banana farms. So let's talk about the three different types of banana farms and which one you should probably end up using at certain parts of your game. So you've got the five two banana farm. Uh, the 502 or the 502 is probably not going to end up getting used all that much, but the five two banana farm is going to be uh, a banana farm that pops out random crates every once in a while and gives you let me check the uh, let me check the math here for you guys as a 52 it gives you five thousand five hundred dollars every single round which is not a bad amount but I'm going to talk about efficiency later on, and it's actually going to be one of the worst banana farms in the game, believe it or not. Oh, why would they do that to us? All right, moving on. We've got the banana bank, basically. And uh, when you get this guy up to 250, what's going to end up happening is the ability that you normally get for fourth tier, instead of kind of letting you borrow money, it just automatically gives you $10,000. Uh, for the last guy down here, you've got the zero, or the 025, and uh, uh, or the monkey Wall Street. And what this is, what this guy's going to do is he's going to automatically generate a good amount of bananas for you throughout the round, but then at the end of the round, give you a huge chunk of money. And this is the banana farm that you guys probably want to use. It's good. It's really freaking good. So use this guy whenever possible. I'll talk about the math, and I'll show you guys the math in just a little bit, but for now, just trust me on this. This guy is your banana farm. So let's play the game a little bit and kind of see how they're going to work. So in, uh, ooh, man, that purple balloon. Oh, God. I don't know if that's going to be strong enough, but hopefully it is. So you can see the uh, uh, the Monkey Wall Street is going to slowly gather $25 every few seconds. It really doesn't seem like much money. But at the end of the round, it's going to give us $4,900 every single round, which is pretty freaking sweet. This guy, you can see the ability is coming back for us. So he's got to wait a little while. And then for this guy, he's slowly popping out $1,125 every single few seconds reasonable, but again, not as efficient as you probably want it to be. So if I had to compare uh, the uh, this guy versus this guy, basically what you want to do is in the late, late, late game, when the rounds last forever, this guy is probably going to end up being your more, most efficient tower, but because it depends on the round length, you can't say that for certain. You don't know how long these rounds are going to be, you don't know how long it's going to take for this ability to come back, but when we use it, we get an automatic 10 grand every single time, on top of the fact that this is still a bank, and we will still get this extra uh, uh, $10,000 every 12 rounds or so, which isn't that much extra, but it is still a little baby bonus right there. Well, this guy, as you see the ending, uh, uh, the end of that round, we get that whopping $4,900 out of this guy, plus the $25 every single few seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys back to sandbox mode. So we're officially in sandbox mode right now, and we need to talk about these banana farms. So at the bottom of the page down there, you guys are going to see some really boring looking stuff down there. But it's important to understand what the heck that is, so we can understand what banana farm is the best for what we're doing in the game. And it always depends. That's the weird thing about it. It always depends. So first of all, what I'm going to talk about is kind of... Uh, what the graph actually, or what the, the table actually means. So we see the farm type, that's, uh, you know, if we upgrade it to 1, 1, or, or, or 2, 2, uh, or even 3, 2, that's what those mean as far as farm type goes. As far as total costs go, I added up how much the 0, 0 farm plus all of the different upgrades are going to cost us. And then, uh, for the uh, income, I basically just add up how many bananas I'm getting and how much money I'm getting per round. Um, so, for example, a 0, zero farm is going to pop out 4 bananas and give me $80. A 3, zero banana farm is going to pop out 16 bananas and give me $320. 
Um, it gets really complicated because there's so many different combinations that you can go for. And that's why you're seeing so many different numbers over here. I know, it's a little bit goofy, guys. Uh, especially when we get to banks, it's going to get even goofier. Uh, but I'm going to go over the three different types. There's the, uh, the, the main increased production banana farm that we're sort of used to over here. Then we're going to go over the banks. And then we're going to go over the markets, basically. So, uh, to start off with just the regular banana farms over here, um, when you look at the efficiency rating, what we're doing here is we're dividing the income per round by the total, or the total cost, yeah, we're dividing income by total cost, 1250 divided by 80 equals 15.6. And the lower it is, the better. That means we're getting more bang for our buck. All right. So the lower it is, the better it is. So when you actually look over here on the side, we see that 14.583 is actually the most efficient banana farm. And the most efficient banana farm for this type is a 1-0 banana farm. But of course, not far behind that is the 2-0. And then surprisingly, not far behind that is actually the 0-0 banana farm, supposed to be one of the worst banana farms in the game. And it's still pretty darn efficient. What is that? As you get more and more upgrades, it seems like what DigiKiwi decided was that space was the biggest factor for you. So even though you're, you're spending more money and you're getting a less efficient banana farm, you're not taking up very much space. So, if you wanted to get a banana farm the most efficient way, the best way to probably do this is to get a 0-0 uh, zero, zero upgrade to increase production and then greater production. Then you probably want to go to, if you look at the 2-2 two, two banana farm, we got a 17.25 uh, efficiency rating right there. So that's a pretty solid rating, so we're going to get valuable bananas. Then finally, we get up the banana plantation and the banana research facility. So that's the order that you want to upgrade this banana farm if you're going for the best rated banana farms, kind of in order to eventually have the end goal being the 4-2 banana farm. Which, by the way, again, is not the most efficient banana farm. A 4-2 is actually less efficient than... Um, both the 1 0, 2 0, and uh, very close to the 0 0 banana farm, as ridiculous as that sounds. I'm not sure if DigiQE decided to do that on purpose, but that's what they did. As I was saying uh, earlier on in the video, the fifth tier banana farms are actually pretty gosh darn bad. Look at the efficiency rating on these things, these are pretty terrible. What the heck? Yeah, so it's, it's pretty bad, guys. Uh, it, you know, when you, even when you look at the upgrades of the banana, banana farm, it doesn't really say much. You want banana? We have banana. It sure does, but not as many bananas as crappy banana farms. So really what you're doing here is you're, you're, you're banking on the fact that you don't have to take up a lot of space for this guy. So if space is an issue, this is the guy you want to get. Otherwise, stay with the sort of lower tier, even fourth tier banana farms. Interestingly enough. Um... So that's it for those banana farms. Now let's talk about the banks. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this is where it gets really, really wonky. Because what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the efficiency rating for these guys being extremely low. This should have sort of similar efficiency ratings to the uh, the the top tier banana farms, but they're the top path banana farms. But they're not. They're actually way, way lower. So they seem almost overpowered but we got to talk about that for a second it's wonky and it's goofy because the numbers may not match what real life actually gives us and the reason why okay before i even get into the banana farms i have to argue with you guys the banana farms are not as efficient as they say because if i built a banana farm this thing's giving me money every single round with that extra money, I can build more banana farms, which is going to make me more money, which can build me more banana farms, which can make me more money, which can build me more banana farms, which can make me more money. So for those 10 to or 11 to 14 rounds that I don't have this $10,000 from my banana bank, I could be building more and more banana farms and getting money faster. So you're basically talking about almost kind of compound interest with regular banana farms. It's very goofy, but you have to think about it like that, guys. So what I'm going to do is, in a future video, I'm going to actually do a real-life scenario of banana farms versus banana banks, because honestly, for myself, I'm curious. I'm very curious, because this is interesting. I want to know what the most efficient thing and what the best thing is to use. So let's talk about the banks now. When you look at the rating over here, you actually see that the 0-3 bank is surprisingly the most efficient, but a 1-3 and a 2-3 uh, are both very similar. Um, honestly, if I had to pick a bank, though, I would go for the 2-3 because I don't have to wait as many rounds to get uh, uh, my money back. So technically, like I said, even though that's like a small variable in, in efficiency, you're probably better off going for that 2-3-0 bank rather than a 0-3 bank. Just as a heads up, guys. Um, 
moving on though, if you actually go up to fourth tier though, it, it almost doesn't make any sense because our efficiency rating drops ridiculous style. Okay, this guy is not efficient because you don't get any, you know, if it went up to like 20 grand or something like that, it might make sense. But chilling at still 10 grand, it just doesn't really make much sense. The only reason you're getting this upgrade is because you need to start borrowing money for some reason. And honestly, I don't really see you doing that. So this is probably the thing that you probably want to stay away from the most. Stealing money like this is just not worth it. And then if you sell this thing or something, guess what? It's it's goofy, but like some of your money ends up kind of getting distracted. Like, it just does, doesn't make any sense, man. It's so freaking weird. Banana banks are goofy as crap, and I don't think I'm ever going to fully understand them. But... Um, so, where else am I going with this thing? Um, the way, I, let's talk about the math really quick. The way I did this, so just so you guys understand it, just in case you guys can find any errors in my math or something like that, I'd love to hear about it. Make sure you leave a comment below if I do have any errors in my math, because you know what, I'm not perfect. It took me about two hours to make all this stuff, and, uh, you know, doing this stuff for two hours can definitely be draining on your brain. <laughs> but anyways, um, the way I did this was I took the cost of the tower itself, the cost of the bank or the IMF loan or, or whatever. Then I uh, counted how many rounds it took to get the $10,000 to take it out of my bank. I never took it out before the round ended because always you want to wait for that interest to pile on in so you can take the money out of your bank. So it took 14 rounds for the 0-3, 13 rounds for the 1-3, 12 rounds for the 2-3. Oddly enough, 14 rounds for the 0-4, and uh, uh, 11 rounds for the 2-4. So the, technically, the fastest way you're going to get your money back is with the 2-4. But even so, it cost so much money, it just wasn't worth it. But anyways, focusing on those uh, those lower third-tier banks, because those are the things we're probably going to end up using the most. Um, what I did was I took the cost... I took the amount of how many rounds it took to get to 10k, and I divided $10,000 by the rounds. So $10,000 divided by 14 equals the income per round. Technically, I didn't actually get 714 income per round. Technically, I got 714 on average per round, because 10k divided by 14 is 714. So, but what that does though is it gives us kind of an average scale of what we're getting over here. Um, example, we did get 833 bananas per round for the 2-3 banana farm, but we had to spend more money to get that. Um, so then the efficiency rating comes into play right now. Um, we take 5150 divided by 714, and that's going to give us our efficiency. It's basically the exact same thing as the other uh, uh, bananas over here, as the other farms, but now we have slightly higher income per rounds and slightly lower costs, and that's what gives us such a, a ridiculously low efficiency rating right here. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, threes, zero threes, one threes, and two threes, they're all very, very similar. If I had to pick, though, I'd go for the two threes because I'm getting my money back in 12 rounds instead of in 14 rounds. And, and in my opinion, that's a big difference right there. Two extra rounds, having that money is nice. You could use it to spend it on banks and hopefully get more money in the long run here. Now, one other note just to, to note really quick is the fact that banks have 11% uh, interest and IMF loans have 15% interest. I am... Not positive that those are the numbers, but I am fairly confident that those are the numbers. If you guys can prove me wrong on that, feel free. Hopefully Ninja Kiwi doesn't change that or buff that or nerf that or something like that so I look like an idiot. But that's what they are currently. Just to note that really quick, it's odd that they took those numbers. I honestly don't even know how I figured them out. I just did some weird math in my head and I just popped a number out. So there we go. Moving on though, we're done with the banks because... <laughs> That's about as difficult as... Oh, you know what? I'm not done with the banks. I lied. I lied. I lied. We gotta talk about the fifth tiers, baby. So, I talked about this in the previous video. But the monkey nomics. Just to give you guys an idea. Um, if you're gonna go for the this bank right here, you're probably already gonna have the 2-5. Alright, so I didn't even do the 0-5. But, um, if you got that much money, why not spend the extra 700 bucks just to like, make it fun for yourself? But this is a weird one because it doesn't really make much. Uh, it, you don't. There's no absolute with this guy because it's always going to depend on how long the rounds are, how stunning is your defense, how how much stallage do you have. If you have the blue to stay on the screen for an extremely long time, this is actually going to be more efficient for you. If you're just wiping out the balloons as soon as they come on with a gigantic temple up at the very front over here, if you're just like bam, 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 and you freaking pop a temple up in here up to the max level right in the very front, well, obviously, 
you know, this guy's not going to be doing as much, uh, you know, money making as he probably could. So I just got to point that out really quick. It depends. There is no absolute, and that's why I said depends on the round. Later game, probably better than, uh, you know, mid to late game. Um, anything like 80, 85 plus is probably going to be good for this guy. Okay, moving on. Now we've got, ooh, this guy's interesting, the Marketplace. So first of all, you probably don't want to start with the Marketplace because he's, you know, kind of expensive. 2600 bucks over here. It's not very easy to just pile up and get that amount of money. So what you might want to do is you might want to start off with something like a 2-0 banana farm and then work your way into the Marketplace once you get enough money. And the nice thing about this guy is he's no worry. He just makes money automatically. As the as the rounds are coming out, he just makes money. And then at the end of the round, he's going to end up giving you a bunch of extra money. A bunch of free money, which is kind of nice. So, uh... Um... What you guys can see on the bottom down here is the efficiency rating for the different markets. All I have to say about all this is, even though it's really kind of confusing for the banks and for the, the other types of farms, the marketplace is actually pretty simple. They're all almost the exact same efficiency. You know, the, the 003 is, is about 18, the, o, the 023 is 18, the 004 is 19.5, the 024 is 19.5. So as you go on and on, you see that almost everything is the same, but there's one that stands out just a little bit more than the rest, and that's the 203. So that's the one that you want to use the most. If you're going to go for a market, go for the 203. It automatically collects those bananas and has an efficiency rating very similar to all of the regular 1020 and 00 banana farms, which are some of the best in the game. Um, once you get to the high tier guys, like the fifth tiers, uh, it's pretty similar to all the rest of them. No crazy outliers or anything like that. It really doesn't matter what you go for. There's a bunch of different combinations that you can get. You can go for valuable bananas with the with this guy. You can go with uh, a greater production with this guy. They're all going to be very, very similar. Uh, and the reason why is because no matter what you get, that you're going to get a $4,900 boost right at the end of the round. The thing I should say, though, is that even though the banana farms are going to be getting you money during the round, it really doesn't matter that much that you're getting it at the end of the round. I mean, like, sure, it might matter just a tiny, tiny bit, but in most circumstances, it's probably just easier to go for the market. So this is my guide to banana farms, guys. If you're going to be picking banana farms, let's compare these guys just a little bit. Let's build these three banana farms and talk about when you should be using these guys and how you should be using them. Uh, first of all, laziness is definitely an aspect here. How lazy are you going to be? Because if you're a lazy guy like me, and you're playing on some easier maps, well, the marketplace is just the way to go, man. Go for a 2-3 marketplace. He's the guy you want to make your goal. What I would normally do is, uh, I would start off with a 2-0, and then maybe even two two zeros or something like that, just to kind of get the money flowing over here. And then instead of going you know, all up to that $3,400 plantation, I'd buy these guys and get the marketplace instead. And that would be a great way to kind of get a decent amount of money going over here, and uh, not have to wait 10 plus rounds to get your money back. That's a great way to do it, and it keeps you actively gaining money throughout the rounds. So that's a, a nice way to kind of just start off your game. You probably don't want to start off with a bank, because if you do kind of like get a couple of these guys, and you're like, you know what, I gotta get the bank as fast as I possibly can. I got a couple of these guys. I'm gonna sell this guy because I got, you know, I got a thousand dollars built over here. I'm gonna sell this guy, and I'm gonna buy a bank really quick. That could work, but now you're stuck not getting any extra money for ten. Er, excuse me, you're not getting any money for 12 rounds? 12 rounds. So, that's obviously a long time to not be gaining any extra money. So, you might even be better... Again, it's a little bit confusing here, guys. But you probably want to end up getting a couple random 2-0 uh, banana farms. Maybe work your way up into a marketplace or something like that. Save up your money. Get a quick marketplace. Then, once you've got the money flowing in with this marketplace, then you can switch into a quick... Uh, Oops, I didn't mean to get that guy. You can switch and do a really quick 2-3 um, bank. Now you've got money coming in. you got money coming in at the end of the round. Now you've got this guy. You're going to wait a couple rounds to get this nice $10,000 bonus. And then with that $10,000 bonus, catch what you got, guys. Maybe you can afford a central market over here. Ooh, then you just get free money for a long time. Alternatively, you can buy a bunch of random 2-0 banana... Oh, God. Oh, God. You can buy a bunch of random 2-0 banana farms over here. 
And once you get this 10 grand, you can say, Whoa, we got enough money for some banks up in here. So you can just go crazy with the banks and slowly get increased production on all these guys as you get the money for them. That is another way to do it. Personally, I think the best way to do it is get this guy uh, up to third tier. Build a couple of random 2-0 banana farms with your banana farm around it. Eventually start turning those 2-0 banana farms into banks. And then, uh, with the extra bank money that you're making, build crap ton of marketplaces. And that's going to be the way you're going to do it, man. Mostly third tiers, mostly low tier upgrades, until you're going to get that bank up in there. And you can start building those fourth and fifth tier farms. Again, I know it's confusing. I know I didn't give you a cut and clear answer, and that's because there isn't one. It's always going to be confusing for you guys. It's always going to be confusing for everybody. Hopefully by the end of this video, though, you understand that the most efficient banana farms are just the standard... Zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero banana farms until eventually you can get this big, beautiful bank right here. Uh, again, eventually I'm going to test this stuff out for you guys to make sure that in a, in a, in a real live game, uh, this would be a good way to play with your banana farms. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you press that like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.